Hello there, my name is Amber Elise. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I stayed up all night reading The Duke and I from the Bridgerton series and today we are going to do a book review on it. I have mixed feelings about this book. Upon learning about it, because I'm a fake fan and didn't know about this book until the Netflix series came out, I was super excited. My mom told me I would love the show. I love reading books before I watch a movie or television show based on a book. I ordered it, it came to my house after a few issues, but it came to my house and I tore it open. I sat down and I began reading. I loved some things, I hated some things, but mostly I was indifferent. I was indifferent. So I'm going to give some non-spoiler information the summary of the book, my overview, thoughts, feelings, some cons, some pros, and my rating. This book was written by Julia Quinn and she wrote a whole like collection on these eight siblings, the Bridgertons. There are eight Bridgerton siblings. We have Anthony, Benedict, Colin, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, Gregory, and the eight siblings name I'm going to butcher and that is Hyacinth. I'm trying, I don't know if I said that right, but yeah. And if you didn't notice, they're like in alphabetical order, kind of interesting. I read The Duke and I, which is the first of the like Bridgerton collection. I believe The Duke and I is the one that the first season of the Netflix series is about. And from what I understand, at least with this one, it follows the siblings' love lives and them getting married and all that good stuff. So this book centers around the sibling Daphne. She is the fourth sibling out of the eight siblings and she's also the first girl, woman uh, of the siblings. And at the time that the premise of this book starts, Daphne is in the process of finding a husband. Well, her mom is <laughs> in the process of finding her a husband. She's interested, she wants a husband and she wants kids, but she kind of has the reputation of being this really nice, kind girl who's like, she is who she is. And because of that, a lot of guys end up seeing her as more of a friend. And then a lot of the other guys that are interested in her, she's not typically interested in them. She at least wants a connection. She wants somebody that she can kind of, you know, wake up and be happy to talk to. And then this story also centers around Simon. He is the Duke of Hastings now. When this story starts, it's Hastings or Hastings. I'm not sure. Please forgive me if I pronounce anything incorrectly because I probably will. His father just passed away, so he is taking his place as, as the Duke. Him and his father did not have a great relationship, so he's not coming into his new position trying to be anything like his father. If anything, he wants to be the exact opposite. So he doesn't want to get married. He doesn't want to have children. He just wants to do his thing. The problem is when he comes to London, because he's been traveling, he comes to London and that's where Daphne is, he notices that everybody is so adamant about uh, getting him to get a wife. He's of age as well to get married and have kids and he doesn't want any of that. When these two collide and meet, Simon tells Daphne, hey, I don't want to get married. You're trying to get married. If you date me, then people will leave me alone and other men will want to pursue you more because they'll know that you're wanted by me, the Duke. They end up going through with it and that's how the story begins. So here is my overview of the book. I'm not a big, big, big historical romance kind of girl, but the themes and the elements of the book did draw my attention in. This was not what I was expecting, but I didn't hate it. I just didn't like it as much as I thought I would. Okay, so let's talk about some cons with this book. The length. <laughs> it was a quick read, I will give it that. However, it was approximately 380, 390 something pages. It did not have to be that long. Some of the different points in the story could have been cut in half. Another con would be the different point of views that were going on. It just kind of confused me because sometimes it seemed like we were taking the perspective of Daphne, but then all of a sudden we were thinking like Simon. It just wasn't always clear to me who I was supposed to be paying attention to. Daphne's character started getting extremely annoying to me which was very frustrating because I loved her in the beginning. I have to remember that she's young and she's learning a lot in a little bit of time, but I was just like, girl, like, what are you doing? I wanted her to go like this and she kind of went here, here, here for me. So yeah. Okay, so a lot of people seem to love Daphne's brothers. I did like Colin, but Anthony and Benedict, especially, oh, they really got on my nerves, especially Anthony. I like Anthony, but I he got really annoying for me as well. A lot of these characters got annoying as the story went on, but I understood his brotherness and overly protectiveness, but sometimes it was just too much. 
closing out the cons, I wanted to do this voice over so I could provide a quick trigger warning and possible spoiler alert. So if you don't want to have anything spoiled for the book, you may want to leave right now. There is a non-consensual sexual act that occurs in the book and I just wanted you to know in case you weren't aware before reading. Okay, let's talk about some positive things. Let's talk about the pros. I really, really enjoyed the initial chemistry between Daphne and Simon before they even decided the courtship, the fake courtship stuff. As soon as they met, I felt that instant just chemistry, regardless if it was romantic or friendship. You could just tell they were gonna be something in each other's lives. And I think the author did a great job of having me feel that and hopefully all the other readers. It really kept me going because I wanted to see how that would grow and develop because it was so strong from the beginning and I could feel it through the words. So that's always awesome. The prologue was so good. Please do not skip it. There's a lot of like important information in there anyways, but it was probably my favorite part of the whole book. I thought it was well written the pace was good. You learn a lot about Simon in that portion and it made me hooked to read the book. And even though I've been complaining about the characters, I did feel like this was a type of series where I do get attached to the characters. I did feel like, okay, I want to follow their journey. So I will read the other books and I think the author did a great job of that. So as far as rating the book, I would give this a B minus maybe a B. Overall, I'm happy I read it and I cannot wait to watch the series. And that concludes my book review of The Duke and I from the Bridgerton series. If you enjoyed what you saw, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I make videos every single week and I would love to have you here. Until we meet again, go read.